Here now is H.M.S. Richards, the voice of prophecy speaker. His subject, the Bible Jesus used. On April 18, 1942, an atheist by the name of Jacob de Chazier went along as one of Jimmy Doolittle's raiders on Japan. He, with others, was captured and imprisoned by the Japanese. He saw two of his companions shot to death and a third die of starvation. During the long days and weeks and months that passed, he began to wonder why the Japanese hated him and why he hated them. He began to think of many things he had learned, of many things he had heard about Christianity. So one day he asked if he might have a Bible. His captors laughed at him, threatened him, and told him to quit making them so much trouble. But he kept on asking. And a year and a half later, May 1944, a guard actually brought him a Bible. As he threw it at him, he said, Three weeks you have, three weeks and no more, and then I take it away. And sure enough, three weeks later, the guard returned and took the Bible away, and de Chazier never saw it again. Four and a half years later, in 1948, de Chazier, the former atheist, his wife and baby were on their way back to Japan as missionaries for Christ. Why this great change? All because he asked for a Bible. And he was given a Bible for three weeks, that's all. You see, friends, the Bible changes things because it's the Word of God. It's a living book. It is God-breathed. For all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, as we read in 2 Timothy 3.16. When we speak of the Bible that Jesus used, we do not mean merely the copy from which he read. What sort of a Bible was it? What did it contain? What did Jesus think about it? What did he say about it? First of all, it was not a book like our Bible today, composed of leaves bound together at the back. It was rather a scroll or roll, as we'd call it, written with black carbon ink on parchment made from the skins of animals. Sometimes the scriptures in Christ's day were written on papyrus, which was something like paper. In fact, the name paper came from it, made by splitting papyrus stalks lengthwise into thin strips, putting them down one layer horizontally, another in the opposite direction, gluing them together and flattening them down with a hot iron. The papyrus plant is much like the bulrush or cattail, which grows along the edges of rivers and lakes. Usually, however, the Holy Scriptures were written on the skins of animals, which had been made into fine parchment or plain leather. The various pieces then were uh, sewn together in a strip from 20 to 30 feet long. A stick was put in each end on which the parchment could be rolled. The writing began at the right, and one read from right to left, just the opposite to our English custom. What did the Bible that Jesus used contain? Well, it contained the books of the Old Testament only. There was no New Testament yet, but it began to be written soon after our Savior was crucified and ascended to heaven. The first part of the New Testament, of course, contains the Gospels, which record the life story of our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Then follow the epistles and other books of the New Testament, written by the disciples and apostles of Christ. The last book of the Old Testament had been written about 400 years before Jesus was born. The Old Testament scriptures are in the original Hebrew exactly the same as the books which we have today translated into our own language. Now some people neglect the Old Testament, and I think it's a great mistake. We should remember it was the only Bible that Jesus used. It was the Bible used by the apostles. It was from the prophecies of the Old Testament that they proved that he was the true Christ. The Apostle Peter declares that these Old Testament books, the Bible Jesus had, were inspired by the Spirit of Christ himself. And we read this in 1 Peter, first chapter, verses 10 and onward. The Holy Spirit inspired these very books, the Spirit of Christ which was in them, we read. Now comes the question, what did Jesus say about the Holy Scriptures? Now remember, everything he said about them applies to the Old Testament as well as to the New. 
Jesus studied the Old Testament and knew it. He quoted from all portions of it. The Law, the Prophets, the Psalms, the three great divisions of the Old Testament, as we discover in Luke, the 24th chapter, and the 25th verse. Jesus referred to the flood, which is recorded in the book of Genesis. You see that by reading Matthew 24, 37. He spoke of Abraham as a real person, Matthew 8, 11. He referred to Moses in his writings, John 3, 14. Jesus spoke of David and Elijah, Matthew 12. He referred to Daniel as a prophet, Matthew 24. He also spoke of the prophet Isaiah, Mark 7. Jesus put the Holy Scriptures above the traditions and teachings of men, even of good men. In the three great temptations brought to Jesus by Satan, he quoted three times from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. We read this in Matthew 4, the first 11 verses. He used this mighty weapon, the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. We read in Ephesians 6:17. Jesus knew that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, as the Apostle tells us in Hebrews 4.12. With three mighty sword thrusts, he defeated the enemy. And this is an example to us. The Word of God is to be our weapon of defense. Jesus not only accepted the Old Testament as God's Word, but he made it plain to others that he believed it to be God's Word. Of the people of Israel who had received the scriptures from God, he said, after quoting the 82nd Psalm, that it was the word of God and the scripture cannot be broken. Read it for yourself in John 10:35. Jesus called the writing, which we know as the Psalms, the word of God and said it couldn't be broken. And remember, he's the faithful and true witness, as we read in Revelation 3:14. Jesus went farther than this and declared that the writings of the Old Testament spoke of him. In John 5.39, the words are recorded, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. His birthplace, the very time of his first coming to this world, his anointing for his ministry, his work of healing the sick and preaching, his crucifixion, his death, his resurrection, all of these things were spoken of and predicted in the prophecies of the Old Testament before he was born, the very book that Jesus used. And he gave the correct interpretation by applying these things to himself, being as he was the Son of God, knowing all things, as we read in John 18, 4. He said point blank that God spoke through Moses, Mark 7, 9. He said that God spoke through David, Mark 12, 36. Jesus did not destroy the word of God, especially that part called the law of God. He said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Jesus set his seal on the truthfulness of the scriptural record of creation. Matthew 19, 4. Of Noah and the flood, Jacob's ladder, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah by fire from heaven of Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt. Jesus spoke of Jonah and the whale, of the conversion of the city of Nineveh, of the healing of Naaman the leper. He also referred to the brazen serpent in the wilderness, the giving of the manna as food for 40 years, and a smitten rock pouring forth water in the desert. Now, I can give you the references for all of these. I will not take time just now. The words of Jesus ought to be decisive evidence to every believer that these things actually occurred and these people actually lived. His attitude toward the Scriptures, the Old Testament as we call it, was clear and plain. He fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Testament. And after his resurrection, he taught his disciples from the things which were written in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and in the Psalms, Luke 24, 44. Jesus endorsed the New Testament also declaring that his own words were the words of God. Here's what he said in John 8, 26. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, that is, God the Father, of course, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. He declared that his disciples who wrote the New Testament would be guided by the Holy Spirit in what they wrote. Things would be brought to their remembrance whatsoever he had said unto them. John 14, 26. 
the Spirit of truth would guide them into all truth. John 16, 13. They would be inspired to teach others. Here's what he said in Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Of his own apostles who wrote the New Testament, he said, He that heareth you heareth me. Luke 10, 16. It is to those who accept the Bible that Jesus used, the inspired Bible, the Bible which reveals the word of God as authoritative, as a revelation from heaven, who are the soul winners today. They are the ones who go into mission fields. They are the great missionaries, the mighty preachers, the soul-winning laymen, the faithful, God-fearing people of every land. To the lawyer who asked Jesus the question, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Our Savior said, What is written in the law? How readest thou? Luke 10:25. The answer to this great question of how to find eternal life is to be found in reading the Word of God. How do we read the book? that Jesus read. Specifically, and right to the point, friend, how readest thou? How do you read it? A young lady, very faithful in her Christian life, was asked by a friend to explain what is meant by devotional reading of the Bible. She answered something like this, I received a letter this morning from one I dearly love, and to whom I have engaged my heart and life. Well, I confess I have read his letter over five times already, not because I didn't understand it the first time, but because I wanted to gain his goodwill, no, not that. It wasn't a question of duty, but simply one of pleasure and joy. I read it five times, and I'm going to read it many times more, simply because I love the one who wrote it. To read the Bible in the same way is to read it devotionally. It is God's love letter to a lost world. That's the way to read the book Jesus used. Read it with a loving heart. Yes, give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer lone and tempest-tossed. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beaming since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way, precept and promise, law and love combining till night shall vanish in eternal day. <laughs>